There's been quite a lot of power cuts in the UK recently, some of them for more than a few days. So in this video I'm going to talk about power generation, specifically solar power, so you can get some lighting, keep your mobile phones charged, anything USB charged, and also run a small fridge. Hi, this is Everyday Prepper. Welcome to the channel. So this video is going to be a slightly more practical nature. Um, it's not going to be as practical as my video specifically about setting up solar panels because uh, I just wanted to give you an idea of what you can achieve just um, fairly simply with little, minimal space and minimal equipment. And this video forms part two of the uh, Beginner's Prepper Guide. Prepping is a very, very big subject. Uh, so I'm going to try and cover kind of the basics really and I'm going to keep this as simple as possible. So the equipment we're going to use today is a 100 watt solar panel uh, which I used in my last video about solar panel, solar power, an 85 amp hour battery, it's a marine battery, a leisure battery. I'm not going to go into the details of all different types of batteries but it's a leisure battery that you want, not a car battery. Really simple lighting strip which is, I believe this one is 20 watts, it's LED and it's pretty hardy, they last really well. And very importantly, a solar charge controller. The system I'm going to show you today can be really, really portable. You could put it into like a battery box, you could wire in all the all the necessary plugins on it and it could be fully port portable. Um, and it would store away in a really, really small space as well. I know that's uh, that's been an issue for a, a lot of preppers is, is where to put everything. So with the battery set up, what you can do is you can literally set up a battery and you can just attach a light to it and then you've got 12 volt lighting and you can have um, quite a lengthy wire really and the and the 12 volts will go down that wire and then you can have the lighting fixed onto a, a wall or um, onto a bottom of a shelf like I've got in my in my kitchen as a bit of a backup. That will run for quite some time. Now I worked out on an 85 amp hour battery this light, this 20 watt light would last for about uh, five days roughly if you just left it on and you didn't recharge the battery you'd get about five days worth of lighting uh, and that's assuming that you'll only use it at night. So obviously you're going to want a method of charging the battery. Now you know there's various ways you can charge batteries you can charge them by plugging them in uh, of course if you've got no power you've got you've got nothing to plug it into uh, you could use a diesel or petrol generator um, but for the purposes of today I'm going to talk about a solar panel the reason being is one it's uh, quiet, doesn't attract attention to you. So if you've got a long-term power cut, uh, you, you don't really want to be the only house with um, a generator running because you're going to get it nicked. Uh, solar panels you can just literally hang out of a window. If you're in an apartment, you can hang out of a window. It doesn't need a massive amount of light. You know, my my solar panel is uh, without direct sunlight is getting about the, uh, about 20 volts um, and is topping the battery up absolutely fine. It doesn't necessarily need direct sunlight and it will work in a cloudy day as well. So that's why I favour uh, solar panels. So what I've done is I've pulled the solar panel off the battery or off the charge controller and pulled, brought the battery in here. And so it's connected up to the charge controller just so I can monitor and see what's going on. And then what I'm going to be doing is wiring up a cigarette lighter socket so that I've got uh, power for my um, camping fridge and I'll be wiring the lighting directly to it just for demonstration purposes and uh, connecting everything up using these uh, nifty little connectors. So now I've rigged up all the uh, various attachments. Um, I did want to put a USB attachment on there. I've got one on my main system. I didn't have a spare to use for today's purposes, um, but it's basically the same kind of setup as the cigarette lighter attachment, really. You just have a positive and a negative. You wire it directly to the battery and then the actual device uh, calculate or recalculates the voltage down to five volts and makes it usable for USB. So it's it's, it's perfect for grid down situations because you can have your mobiles and your radios. You know, depending on how bad the power outage is, uh, I know that a lot of uh, networks, mobile phone networks, are doing contingency planning right now uh, in case of a national grid going down. So um, read into that whatever you may, but uh, they're they're obviously just making prep preparations just like we are. So uh, it's, it's a good thing to have some kind of backup yourself, definitely. So this camping fridge is a, it runs between sort of 40 and 60 watts. It can either heat up and keep food warm uh, or for the, what I would use it for is keeping things cool. So it reduces the ambient temperature around it by a certain amount inside so it'll, it'll only so if you've got it in a really hot summer's day and you've got it out in the garden then it's, it's going to drop the temperature by a few degrees from what's outside so if you're in 30 degrees outside it's not really going to be very good as a fridge but hopefully you won't be working in extreme temperatures and uh, so you know and this is just for demonstration purposes only but it runs between 45 60 watts and uh, when I plug it in 
you will see that it does drop the battery right down and but the battery recovers fairly quickly so certainly that we're more likely to well, how i figure we're more likely to have power cuts in the winter and that's that's all the talk on the media uh, and uh, from the, in the on the national grid site it's all about you know winter power cuts so i figure it's, it's going to be fairly cold outside so you know if you were to have an extended power cut um, for more than a few days or even just a few days and you wanted to keep some stuff fresh you'd shove it in your um, camping cooler box put it outside and um, you know, in the night time and it would keep fairly cool and, and then during the day what you do is you just have your rig set up with your, your 100 watt solar panel um, and that would, that would run it fine throughout the day even if you did it in bursts it's not going to run your battery down too much I mean ideally I would say you'd want the, the, double this system so two leisure batteries of maybe 110 amp hours each or 120 amp hours I think they come in now and two uh, 100 watt 12 volt solar panels uh, or one 200 watt solar panel that's what I recommend and that will power quite a lot for a long long time and the great thing about solar panels is it's just set and forget you know you, you, it doesn't require much maintenance you might want to clean bird droppings off of it every now and again but these flexible solar panels are brilliant because you can just you, you can hang them out of a window so you know in a flat situation it doesn't matter where you live you know you just hang this out of a window or stick like I have I haven't stuck mine up on a on a roof or anything and it's been repairing this battery absolutely fine you know i've just got it leaning against the conservatory and it's and it's working a treat so from there uh, if you wanted to expand on that system and, and build it up and attach more things to it like an inverter obviously if you, if you put an inverter on you would attach that directly to the battery the reason i haven't bothered with an inverter today is because you, you really don't need one for that kind of purpose you don't you don't need it for lighting you don't need it for you don't need it for usb you don't need it for uh, running this fridge anything like that at all and an inverter ch tends to drain the battery just by turning it on so uh, you know they're not very efficient because they're converting dc power to AC power and it's a really inefficient process and it does tend to drain your battery especially if you leave it on overnight you'll know what I mean so I don't uh, I, I don't use an inverter as, as much now I try and gear everything towards 12 volt systems and wire it directly to the battery this is a brief introduction really uh, nothing too complicated I, di I did do a bit more in-depth video pr before I'll put a, a note up on the on the screen now uh, and if you if you did want to expand on this you know and build up a large battery bank and a large solar panel array then um, you know you it doesn't take it's, it's, a, it's a minimal learning curve you don't have to really learn a great deal more you can just expand on on what you know if you can figure out how to wire up a charge controller a solar panel to a to one battery then you can do it with multiple um, you just need to know about you know wiring in series and parallel if you feel like you would like me to cover this in much more detail and and expand on that and show you how i built my uh, my larger battery banks and uh, you know what you can do with it and demonstrate demonstrate how it's all done then you know please do let me know in the comments if I get enough comments asking for specific details on a larger battery bank and a larger solar power array then I'll um, I'll definitely consider doing a video on it otherwise you know there is there is loads of stuff on the internet um, that some of it can get quite complicated I did spend a couple of years looking into it very deeply because I wanted to um, make my system as efficient as possible because I was always thinking you know of a grid down situation so if there was a grid down situation I don't want I don't want my system losing power over time I want to get the maximum power out of it at all times so anyway I hope you found that useful especially if you're beginning prepping for the first time I wanted to try and keep things simple um, I generally my name's Steve by the way I generally make videos um, on practical side of prepping and on events that may affect us as preppers I try to keep things no nonsense I don't like all the fear mongering that's out there you know you don't, you don't need all of that it's the last thing you need if you're prepping through fear then you're doing it wrong um, the, old, the whole idea of prepping for me is is that you want to be um, have that peace of mind so um, you know you just you just prep away in the background and uh, when all these events come up you know that you're prepped um, for sort of almost event, every eventuality that, that's the way I look at it if you did find the video useful please like and subscribe so you can get similar content like this and let me know what you think in the comments you know if you've got a, already got a, a comprehensive setup or solar setup uh, have you got any other ideas then you know please let me know in the meantime thanks very much for watching and stay prepared <music>